this video, you're gonna watch me, a designer, design a brand completely from scratch. I'll be going over all of the important stages so you get an in-depth and detailed look at the design process. So if you're looking for a video to not only show, but explain the full process of creating a brand, you're in the right place. Jumping straight into it. In a previous video of mine, we went over the process of creating mood boards for brands. In this, we use an example of a vegan sweet business. Well, in today's video, we are following on from that and designing the brand. Before we design, here's a little information to get you straight up to date. February 14th, the inquiry. Love is in the air and the client, Sugar Coated, have reached out after filling out a form on my website asking if I have availability to create their brand identity from the ground up. They are based in Toronto, Canada, and the business specializes in vegan sweets. Within my inquiry form, they have submitted their own Pinterest board, so I, as the designer, can see exactly what it is they are looking for. February 16th, the brand proposal. I put together a proposal outlining the stages of the branding process, going in depth so the client knows exactly what to expect, including things like pricing, time frame, and lots more. February 18th, onboarding. The client accepts the proposal and is sent a contract to sign along with receiving a 50% payment for the project. They then fill out an in-depth questionnaire. We jump on a call so I can get to know them and the business better and we can go over some brand strategy. February 24th, brand strategy and creative direction. Now this stage was already covered in a previous video when creating the mood boards for this brand. So make sure you go and check that out after this video. Now we are here, February 26th, and we are about to design the brand. So here's the style and direction we are trying to achieve with this brand identity. From this, we know exactly what kind of fonts we're gonna be working with, so we can head over to Envato Element, which is today's sponsor of the video. We're gonna source some fonts, which will then turn into a primary logo type. I am so excited to actually use these fonts. They look incredible and exactly what I wanted. They match the mood board really well, which is key. So I have pick six fonts and we are now going to whittle these down to the primary number one so the first one is called dirtbag what a name by the way um i think this may be a little too rustic so it is gone next is be bold now we want to go bold and i do like how it kind of feels personalized already so we'll keep that Next is Borders Regular. Once again, I really like this one. I think I, to be honest, these two are my favorite so far. Okay, next one is Auditorium and it's a little kid-like and a bit too rough, so I'm, I'm getting rid of it. I didn't like it. Um, next is Mesa Bold. Once again, I don't, I'm not sure in this rustic look, so I think we'll just get rid of that one. Okay, last but not least, we have got Requeen, if that's how you pronounce it, Requeen. Um, I think it's too thin. I do want to go bold, so it's gone and we've got two left now. Okay. I think, I don't think it matters because I do want to go for that customization and that personalized feel, but I'm getting vibes off of this first one. So I think I'm going to get rid, I think I'll get rid of the second one. Yeah. We'll go, we'll work with this one. I just, I get like pulled in by certain fonts and I have a really good feeling about this one. So we now have the primary font that I'm now gonna turn into that primary logo type. Now, one of the first things that I think about is exactly how I want it to be laid out. Now for this one, I know that I kind of want all the letters to be going into one another. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust each individual letter and I'm gonna move them so they kind of form into one another. The next thing that I'm gonna do is actually customize the type. So my go-to tools for customizing typography are the direct selection tool, the pencil tool, and the curvature tool. Now for this, I am solely gonna be using the pencil tool to just manipulate the letters and really give it that personalized feel that I was talking about to match the type in the mood board. So I have just got my pencil tool and I am just going over the letter S and pretty much just making a custom S with the pencil tool. Now I'm just dragging it around the letter and picking up those anchor points and creating new shapes within that S. So what I'm gonna continue doing now is go over all of the individual letters with that pencil tool to really give it some personality. Now the reason I like to customize typography is to make it really distinct and one of a kind to the business. It is very easy for every designer to purchase a font and then to just use that as the logo type. But when you add in that custom customization and you tweak the letters, you are then making it one of a kind 
find for your client. It is looking beautiful. Just by customizing and tweaking those letters slightly and making them kind of drip into one another, it's giving it that like kid-like feeling. And it is reminding me of sugar and sweets and just by it being bold, it just works really well. And it matches the typography that is within the mood board, which is really important because you've already set up a vision for the client. So they're expecting the typography to be similar to the mood board. So the next stage after creating that logo type is to create some variations. Now it is so important as a designer to be providing lots of logo variations for your clients. So try and put yourself in your client's shoes what are they going to be needing the most out of their logos what is their business so for example if this is a vegan sweet business I need to be thinking as the client they're going to need the logos on packaging websites social media business cards and stationery so I've got to try and think exactly what variations they will need so we're going to do a landscape variation we'll do a circle variation we'll make sure we do a logo mark and we'll just give them versatility when using their logos. So when going through the typography earlier, it's actually inspired me to create a mascot. So in the A, I actually really liked the legs of the A and it's inspired me to kind of create a mascot with really long legs. I have no idea why, but I think it's gonna work nicely. So in the mood board as well, there was a lot of emphasis on kind of illustration and creating some really funky things. So I think having like a mascot for this logo mark or for the brand itself will work really nicely. So I think for this main mascot, I'm actually gonna do like a love heart suite and then we'll do like the body parts coming off of this. So a good tip here is if you're trying to draw something symmetrical, you can actually go to object repeat mirror and it will bring up a line where you can basically draw from that center point. So if we draw a heart, it will then repeat it in a mirrored action. So I am just gonna grab the brush tool and we are just gonna go in and try and draw like a really cute face on this. I'm gonna add maybe some legs to it and some arms and hopefully we can create a mascot. I mean, I'm not the best drawer, but I always like giving these illustrations a go and it is really simple when you just use the brush tool. How? Freaking cute is my love heart. This person needs a name. It's in the comments, name my love heart person. How freaking cute. Okay, this is really good because now we can actually take this mascot that we have created and actually use this as other logo variations, giving the client more versatility when using their logo suite. I think this is a really good place for me to say that every design process will be different. So if you're watching currently and you're the type of designer that likes to sketch with the pen and paper first before actually going in in Adobe Illustrator with the brush tool or the pencil tool, then it is okay to have a different process. Every designer will do it differently and you've just on honestly got to find what works for you because what works for you is your process. So don't worry if people are coming to you saying, you don't do this, you don't do that. It is your process and that's what makes it unique. On to the next variation. Now I really wanted to create something circular for this brand because I don't know, having that kind of shape and layout is really good for social media, it's good for packaging, and for a vegan sweet brand, I think on the packaging, it'd be really nice to kind of have circular stickers. So we're gonna create a variation in a circle shape. Now, because I already have customized the type, I can't really put this into a circular shape. So a really good tip and bit of advice I can give you if you are in this situation is to basically create a new art brush with your type. So I'm gonna group sugar together and I'm actually gonna drag it over to my brushes panel. I'm gonna select art brush and press okay. So now that is its own art brush. Settings will come up, but I kind of just leave it as that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually grab my circular tool now and I am gonna just get rid of one of the anchor points to make it into a semicircle. I can then get it to the desired shape and length that I want and I can now drag the art brush which is sugar onto the line and it will actually form around that semicircle that I have created. So I don't have to faff about with trying to move the letters to create that circle. It is now on that circular line because we put it as that art brush. So I'm gonna do exactly the same for coated and add this in. Once we have got that, I'm just gonna change the color to make sure that it actually looks okay. So I'm gonna grab my color palette and make sure this looks okay because I want the mascot to kind of be coming over the type and hopefully this will work. 
Oh my God, that looks insane. How incredible does that look? Obviously, I'm gonna fill the mascot with color, but for now, knowing that that kind of space and the layout works really, really well, I'm so excited for this brand. It now means I can use the head of that mascot as the logo mark. So we've got a lot of variations, which is really great for the client because they can now use the logo suite in any desired space that they need. Next part, we can start adding the juicy color. So we have created a color palette in the previous video along with the mood board. And we're now gonna see if it is gonna work. So through research, I figured that these were the best colors and most suited for this type of brand. And I'm gonna start adding in the blues, the creams, the greens, and see if this actually works. So I just kinda like to create nine artboards and then I'll put the logos over and I'll try out all of the colors to make sure that everything works really well together. I swear color makes me so damn happy. Like finding color palettes that just work incredibly well together is my thing. Um, so we've gone for the creams, the greens, and the blues, and I'm leaving out that really vibrant blue. I just kinda like that pastel vibe, and what I think I'm gonna do is create some more mascots, and then maybe bring in those other colors. But for now, I really like those primary colors being the green, the blue, and that kind of off-white. So I went ahead with the pandy brush tool, and I have created another two mascots. They look so damn cute, and I think they'll work really well for this brand because we've already got that first mascot, but we can start including these within the packaging, within the socials, and we can actually get these mascots made into costumes that can promote the brand. Just like, you know, Duolingo's got the mascot that you see on TikTok. I kind of have visions for the sweet brand having mascot and kind of the clothing like that. So the next job now is to actually color in this now that we have our color palette. So I'm gonna grab the live paint bucket tool and I am gonna select the color that I want to fill it with. And I'm literally just going in and I'm filling the trousers, filling the love heart and filling it with that desired color that I want. Jeez, they look so fun. Like I wanna be part of their squad. So I mentioned before about maybe creating a pattern. So we'll create a pattern by going to object, pattern, make, and then I can select, do I wanna go grid, brick by row, or I think brick by column works because they're kind of in the right place for what I need. I think in the desired space, maybe we could add like some circles of sweets, maybe like falling. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna drag that out. We'll add an outline of black increase the stroke and we'll place that more yeah that kind of looks that kind of works right i'll duplicate this and see if the other colors work okay that works really really well and it fills the gap and kind of gets rid of that white space that needed to be filled i'm just going to tweak these slightly with the pencil tool and make them a little imperfect because Every suite that you get isn't perfect. There's always something a little different about it. So I kind of like that idea of having that imperfect little circle and that matches with the logo type being very kind of rustic and a bit misplaced. Just taking a second to give myself a little round of applause because I get so excited about designing brands. It's so cool. So we now have a full logo suite. We have done the color palette. We have now created a brand pattern and it is all just coming together. Now the last stage of creating the brand identity is to actually show it in a real life situation. So for this, I use mock-ups and we'll be using Envata Elements again to source the mock-ups. I think we're gonna go for like a pouch or something that will hold the sweets. It's just so me as the designer can see exactly how the brand identity can be implemented. And when you put this into the brand presentation for the client, they will get a real good understanding of exactly what the brand is gonna look like. So we have now completed the whole design process of creating a brand identity from scratch. The final, final stage that I do when working with clients is I will now take all of this I have created and I will put it into a 20 to 24 page document that basically explains all of the thoughts and all of the processes that have gone into designing the logo. It gives them more information about why things have been specifically designed and then it shows all of those juicy mock-ups and the brand in action. If you are unsure on how to actually present the brand presentation, I have a really great brand presentation template in my design shop. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link in the description. Last but not least, it is time to do the incredible reveal video of this brand identity that we have created right here on this channel. We have gone from a mood board to a complete brand identity in just one video. So everyone, meet Sugar Coated.
So that was my unique design process that I go through every single day working with clients. Hopefully it's given you an insight into the design process overall, and it's given you some inspiration when working on your own design process. If you have enjoyed this video and you liked the brand, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you at the next video.